Hi everyone, this is Marcus with DTF Station, and in this video, we will go over in great detail everything you need to know to operate the Prestige A4 DTF printer. Since we cover so many different areas of the printer's operation, we have segmented the video into chapters. Now, let's begin. Chapter 1 Media Loading Most issues with DTF roll-to-roll -roll printing come from loading the media incorrectly. After following these instructions, you may need to repeat to readjust the film since DTF rolls are not always perfectly rolled. Film can also slightly turn over time during the printing process. First, take the feed bar and lift it up and remove the side cap as shown. Next, grab your media roll and place it onto the feed bar and use the cap you just removed to lock the media into place. Then, place the entire feed bar onto the brackets and slowly feed the media into the back of the printer. Note that the film should be fed into the printer, making sure that it is aligned to the center of the opening as shown. The end caps have screws that you can loosen and tighten. Align the left side first, then tighten the screw. Now head over to the right cap and secure by tightening the screw. When tightening the screws, be careful not to tighten too much since the screw can dig into the feed bar and damage it. This left end cap is meant to stay in this position at all times. The right side end cap should be just tight enough so that it doesn't move around but not very tight since this end cap is one that you will constantly remove and put back on every time you replace the media roll. Now, turn the main power on by using the switch on the back. Before we move on, let's go over the control panel. The power button is used to turn the power on and off. The ink button is used to perform a head cleaning. Press it for more than 5 seconds to initiate a head cleaning. The trash button is used to cancel a job in the middle of production. The enter button is used to feed the film backward towards the rollers. And the exit button is used to move the media out to the front. On the screen, RH stands for room humidity, the number below that shows the room temperature, and the bed temperature indicates the temperature at which the heating platen is currently at. Now open the top lid and position the film so that it is feeding straight from the roll. Now power the printer on using the power button in the front. Wait until the power button's light stops blinking. This indicates that the power on process is now complete. With your right hand, press the media up against the internal ruler's wall. With your other hand, press the feed button until the media starts to feed through the rollers. Once you have the media fed out onto the front panel, take a screwdriver and adjust these media guides. The media should sit under about 30 to 50% of each media guide. At the beginning of every new roll, always feed the media out past the media guides. This is a good way to check at the beginning if the media has been fed incorrectly. If the media hits any of the media guides, the media has been fed and crooked and needs to be reset. Next, use the enter button to push the media back and towards the media rollers to get ready to start printing. Use this image as a guide. This is about how far back you should push the media towards the rollers. Any closer in and it can cause a head strike. The right side of the film should always be up against this red line, but never past it. The left side, depending on the width of your film, may have a little bit more room but should never pass this blue line. A good visual checkpoint is the end of these two rollers. Chapter 2 Production Prep At the beginning of your production day, you should always start with the head cleaning and a nozzle check. Heading to DGRIP, go to Devices, then Printer Properties, and click Head Clean to perform a head cleaning. The printer carriage will exercise for a bit during this process. Once the head cleaning is complete,
Click print nozzle check pattern to perform a nozzle check. This will print a nozzle check pattern on the media that has been loaded. Check the pattern and look for any breakages in the lines. Any breakages indicate nozzles that are not firing due to a clog. Certain channels like yellow may be difficult to see, so one tip is to place the film on top of a white paper and use a flashlight. If there are breakages, go ahead and perform another head cleaning and repeat the steps until you have all nozzles firing. Once you have a good nozzle check pattern, use the enter button to push the media back into the printer to prepare to start printing. Make sure not to push the media back until the nozzle check pattern hits the media rollers. This will cause wet ink to get onto the rollers and then smear onto your preceding prints. Chapter 3 Printing Now, with your print file loaded, go ahead and push the print icon to print. At the beginning of your print, you will see a horizontal line. This indicates the full width of your upcoming prints. If this line exceeds the width of the media, that means your print is also exceeding the width of your media. If you see this, immediately push the trash icon button at the front of your printer to cancel the print and readjust the print file. Once the blinking light on the power button turns solid, you know that your print has been completed. You will see another horizontal line at the bottom of your print, indicating that your entire print file has been printed. Use the exit button to push the media out until the bottom horizontal line lines up with this cut line. With one hand, hold the media taut. Remember that the ink is still wet. With the other hand, take a sharp blade and cut the film to release it. Since your other hand is holding the film taut, the cut should be clean and you should be able to catch the film as the cut is finished. Now, get the tray that was included with your printer and some hot milk powder. Place the film on the tray with the ink side facing up. Pour some hot milk powder onto the film. Now, grab the film on each side with both hands and move the powder around, making sure that all the wet ink gets covered. The powder will stick onto all of the wet ink. This is also why it is important to make sure to powder your film no later than two hours after it has been printed. After two hours, the ink will have dried up too much for the powder to stick. Once the film has been fully powdered, shake off any excess powder. Next, flick the film with your finger to remove any remaining powder on the film. You can also use our Seismo S20 shaker to make this process less messy. Now it's time to cure the film. To cure the film, we will be using the Phoenix Oven Air. Make sure to turn this oven on at least 10 minutes before heating any film, as it needs time to heat up. Note, do not turn the air purifier on while the oven is heating up, as this will extend the time the oven needs to heat up, since the air purifier will start to suck up the heat. Also, we recommend regularly replacing the HEPA and charcoal filter in the air purifier to ensure the safety of your environment. Please watch our Phoenix Oven Operation video for more details. You can also use a conveyor dryer or heat press to cure the film, but the temperature of the curing is very important. If the film is cured at a temperature that is too low, it will cause issues with the print. The minimum temperature required to cure the powder is 120 degrees Celsius or 248 degrees Fahrenheit. Press this button to change any settings as needed. You may need to change the settings depending on your environment. Humidity, temperature, and elevation of your environment can affect the curing process. In this example, we will be curing at 257 degrees Fahrenheit or 125 degrees Celsius. Please watch our temperature instruction video. We will be curing the film for 60 seconds, but again, this may vary depending on your environment. Place the film in the center of the curing bed. Press this button to start the timer. It will beep in 60 seconds. Once the oven starts to beep, press this button again to stop the alarm. Disclaimer, the bottom platen will get extremely hot, so always use heat resistant gloves when removing the film. Inspect the film. It's difficult to show this in the video, but the powder should have fully melted and should have a finish similar to an orange peel. 
If the powder is grainy at all, you should cure the film for longer or increase the temperature. When your film has been properly cured, make sure to cut both the top and bottom horizontal lines. You can use a cutting board or a pizza cutter to cut the horizontal lines off and create a straighter edge. If you won't be pressing the film immediately after, you can store the film for up to six months. When storing the film, store it in a dry, dehumidified location, and we recommend placing desiccant or paper towels on the film to absorb any moisture. Also, avoid high heat and sunlight. Now we will prepare to press the film onto the garment. Make sure to have your heat press powered on and heating up for at least 10 minutes before this step. Our recommended settings for the heat press are 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds with medium pressure. If you are using a non-Prisma series heat press, please use a temperature gun to ensure that the heating element is heating up to the desired temperature evenly across the panel. Proper heat application is extremely important for the print to be durable and the film to peel off easily. If you press too hard, you may experience ink evaporation on the white inks. Medium pressure is recommended, especially on black garments or non-cotton garments. Once the heat press reaches the correct temperature, place the garment on the plat. We recommend pre-pressing for about 5 to 8 seconds to remove any wrinkles and moisture. Our universal films can be peeled hot, warm, or cold, but due to some variables, we normally recommend either warm or cold peeling our films. Under the correct settings, you may hot peel as well. To hot peel, wait 3 seconds after pressing and slowly peel the film in a rolling motion. If you see any issues such as the print peeling off, stop and press with increased heat for a little bit more pressure. You can also use a garment to rub the edge of the transfer to cool off the edge before peeling. To warm peel, after pressing, move the garment off the heat press and then slowly peel the film off. To cold peel, after pressing, wait for the film to completely cool off and then peel. This will give you the most vibrant finish. If your fabric keeps getting stuck to the film, you will need to adjust your settings. Make sure to test your settings multiple times before selling your transfers. Now that the film has been peeled, you may notice a glossy finish on the print. To give the print a nice matte finish, Place either a garment or silicone treated paper, not Teflon, on top of the print and press for an additional 5 to 8 seconds. If you press with another garment on top, this will remove the glossiness but also give a nice hand feel, also known as garment weave stamping, and absorb any oily residue from the ink. Chapter 4 Troubleshooting Now we will run through a few scenarios of different issues that you may come across and how to troubleshoot these problems. Remember, the printer will always do its thing. The rest of the variables depend on how you apply the powder, how you cure the powder, and how you press the film. That's why it is so important to spend the time in the beginning to fine tune all of your settings. Scenario one, with all the right settings, including correct temperature, curing time, the right amount of powder, pressing time, and temperature, you should get a clean, vibrant print with good hand feel. Scenario 2. What happens when you put too much powder onto the film and you do not remove any of the excess powder when pressing on a white and black garment? When pressing this film onto a white garment, visually, you will probably not see much of a difference, but the hand feel will be pretty thick due to the excess amount of powder. When pressing this film onto a black garment, you will also have a thicker hand feel, but you'll also visibly see a white haze around the image. This white haze can be somewhat fixed by pressing the print longer since this would help more of the powder melt into the garment, but a good amount of it may not be removable. Even after a wash, which would remove a good amount of the haze, and especially on non-cotton garments, there may be irreversible marks around the edges of the print. In highly humid environments, the powder may be more difficult to remove from the film. In these situations, you can place the film under the Phoenix oven air heat for just one second, which will help remove some of the moisture. 
Scenario 3. In Scenario 3, we will try pressing the film while using no powder. The results will be a film that does not transfer the actual print to the garment. This is because the powder has two roles. One, it melts under the garment threads and adheres the print to the garment. Two, it also helps the print's stretchability and improves washability. Scenario 4. Here we will apply an uneven layer of powder. This can also happen if bad powder is used. When either of these happens, parts of the prints may adhere to the garment, but other parts may not. As you can see here, parts of the print are tearing off. It's important to get an even coverage of powder over the entire print. It is also very important to use good powder. Here are some recommendations. Once a bag of powder is open, make sure to use all of it within a six month window. Once a bag of powder is open, keep the powder in an airtight bag or container with desiccant to keep it dehumidified. Moisture will make the powder unusable. Dust and debris can also cause issues, causing inconsistent peeling. Lastly, keep the powder away from sunlight or heat. Once the powder melts to any degree, it becomes unusable. Scenario 5. In Scenario 5, we will heat press the film at a lower temperature of 268 degrees Fahrenheit or 131 degrees Celsius. While the lowest temperature we ever recommend pressing is around 300 degrees Fahrenheit on non-cotton garments, in general, we do recommend 320 degrees Fahrenheit, especially if you are trying to hot peel the film. When the temperature is not hot enough, and you go over to peel after pressing the film, parts of the print may have powder that was not fully melted, hence will pick up with the film and not adhere to the fabric. Prints may also peel off or shrink after the first wash. The transfers may stick to the top of the heat press when it releases since it's not sticking to the garment. If you still see these issues when you have your heat press set to 320 degrees Fahrenheit, use a temperature gun to check if your heat press is actually reaching the temperature that you have it set to. Some heat presses that are not as consistent will not actually reach the temperature that you have it set to or have different areas of the heating element that are not heating up evenly. Scenario 6. In Scenario 6, we will test what happens when you heat press at too high of a temperature. For this example, we will set the heat press to 374 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. When your heat press is too hot, you may have trouble separating the film after the press. This is because the ink may have adhered to the garment, but now is sticking to the film. You may also evidence the ink boiling or where the print started to shrink. If your temperature is set at 320 degrees and you still see these issues, make sure to use the temperature gun again to check that the heating element is actually hitting the temperature that you have it set to. Scenario 7. Here we will cure the powder at a lower temperature than recommended. We normally recommend curing the powder at 248 degrees Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius. In this test, we lower the temperature down to 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius. Similar results can occur from not curing long enough. One indicator that the powder has not been cured enough is if the powdered side after curing does not have a shiny orange peel finish and instead has a grainy finish. One sign that your powder has not been cured enough is if you see parts of your print peeling. Washability will also be affected. After the first wash, your image may shrink or bubble up, and in many instances, the colored layer will wash off. If you see these issues when your settings are correct, make sure to use the temperature gun to make sure that what you're seeing on your setting screen matches the actual temperature at which the powder is curing. Another issue you may see are boiling issues. 
This has to do with excess moisture on the film. One remedy for this is heating up the film a second before the powder is added. Scenario 8. Here we will see what happens when you cure the powder at too high of a temperature. We normally recommend curing the powder at 248 degrees Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius. In this test, we will set the temperature to 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. When this happens, you won't be able to peel the film after pressing hot or warm. It basically melts the powder so much that your only alternative is to cold peel. Even with the cold peel method, you may have some difficulties. You may also see boiling issues in the print, especially if you have large solid areas of color. Scenario 9. In this scenario, we will have all the settings at every step correct, but when we peel after the press, we will not wait 3 seconds, and we will peel quickly. First, you always want to give the film at least 3 seconds to cool down, even when using the hot peel method. Also, when you peel, you want to peel slowly in a rolling motion, where the film stays close to the surface of a garment instead of pulling away from it. When done incorrectly, small letters or corners may pull up or tear. Scenario 10. In this scenario, with all the settings correct at every step, you heat press the print immediately after curing the powder on the film. When pressed too quickly, you will have to wait longer than 3 seconds to perform a hot peel since the powder is still melting. When using the warm peel method, you may still encounter some resistance. You may also see some boiling or bubbling in the print, especially if you have large solid areas of color. To resolve these issues, we recommend giving the film at least 5 to 10 seconds after the powder curing step to allow the powder to cool down. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.